Hello everybody and welcome. In today's video I'm going to go over how I turn these little wooden ducks for jeeps. A uh, relatively recent trend from what I can tell. The uh, internet indicates that this started about four years ago and as a sign of appreciation and to give someone a nice day by uh, surprising them with a little duck on their jeep. I find it an amusing trend and uh, I'll probably support that. I've actually received one and it's sitting on my dash at the moment. I did use it as a kind of a baseline for how I designed these. Uh, they're simple uh, offset turning. Uh, I'll use the first axis and work off of that and then once I get the outside diameter, uh, diameter done I'll move on to the uh, inner diameter with the uh, second point. It's only about an eighth of an inch difference on the size model I'm working on. As you can see here, my rough dimensions for this model I'm working on, uh, I'm working off of about two inches in length, about an inch and three quarters in width. The uh, depth is just the depth of the stock. I expect in the future I'll be working off of a spindle blank of that dimension so that I can uh, cut multiple at the same time. And as you'll see, the distance between my center point and then my offset center point is only about an eighth of an inch for this size model. Uh, the first one I turned, uh, I did it fully in the round and it doesn't look bad. But I find that having the uh, sides adds that little bit of character to it that makes it uh, slightly more duck-like. Uh, even though it is still a toy, it helps add to the illusion a little bit. Now that I have my blank hot glued to my waste block, and I'll probably use CA glue in the future for that, uh, I'm going to start giving myself a rough idea of where my lines to need, need to be, and I'll start my initial shaping. Um, I'll work it off so that the two longer ends are rounded out, and that'll set my outside diameter initial. Uh, it will change as I do the offset turning because one of those edges is going to get worked down a little bit further. So something to consider, even though I've got it set a little bit larger than two inches, uh, final is going to be slightly less than that. Okay, now I'm actually going to start the shaping of the uh, first turning. And like I mentioned, this is going to set the outside. It's also going to be what's going to establish the tail area. So what you'll see is me working along the bottom of it near the uh, waste block to give it that curvature, uh, rounding it up. And then I'll be working off some of the upper area where the uh, neck is going to be just so that I have kind of a rough idea when I move to my next turning on how I'm going to do that.
Now, when I start making these off of actual longer blanks, I think I'm going to pursue, pursue using a uh, four jaw chuck for the first turnings, and that'll let me maintain an established center point for each of the cutoffs as I work my way down. And then I can use that established center point to find off my offset center point. Uh, trying to turn it between centers, I don't think it would be as productive you're trying to perform it in a uh, bulk method like that. Here I'm just trying to establish the base of the duck as well as the uh, portion that I was going to be the cutoff that's going to go against the blue block. Uh, also do a little shear scraping with a carbide tool to clean it up uh, as a finished product. I'm not planning on sanding these down extremely. There's going to be some hand sanding to about 240 grit just to soften some of the edges and clean up any stray turning marks that may be present. And there you see the top melt glue gave way uh, right where I was parting at. Not completely unexpected because it is developing high temperatures, especially with that tool in the area. But I didn't get as far down towards the center as I would like, which is why I may consider a medium or thick set CA glue uh, when I use the glue, book, glue block for these small turnings in the future. And now I'm setting up for my offset turning, uh, once again using the glue block. Uh, even on a more production level, if I use a spindle blank for the first turnings, I still think the second turnings were going to require the use of a glue block so that I could get the offset associated with it. And now it's time to start focusing on the second turning. Uh, as I do this offset, I'm going to slightly undercut uh, down into the blank a little bit. And that's going to start developing the tail, but it's also going to start rounding off the uh, breast of the duck. Uh, it may be possible with more traditional tools, and I will be trying those in the future, that I may be able to get a uh, more developed tail and a clean around over on the uh, breast of the duct, but I can't do it with the carbide tools, which is what I was choosing to use in this instance. Uh, you'll also see that I am working my way up for the upper portion of the duct, and the second center point is actually going to be the uh, turning point for the neck itself. Uh, I'm going to give myself a half inch goal for that. Uh, the idea is that hopefully I can make it a friction fit for the duck's head when I drill that out. And it's also possible to turn the head directly at this point in time if you are practiced at uh, turning spears. I've got a ways to go in that department, so I'm choosing to go with the route of turning those separately and then being able to attach them. The benefit to that is if the wood where the head has slightly different grain patterning, you can turn it so that it complements the uh, duck's body appropriately.
rather interesting that between the flat edges on the piece and the offset for the turning, it looks like on camera it's jumping around a lot, but it is actually very consistent uh, while working with it. It's not as difficult as the camera makes it out to look to be here. So as you can see, I'm getting relatively close to my vibe center. Uh, that one worked best for putting on the glue box because it has that outer ring to help uh, equalize the force and apply the pressure to the block as its glue is setting. But it is, it does take up more room, so I'm going to move to the more standard uh, needle point vibe center so that I can continue turning down to the half inch goal I have for the neck region. Didn't quite end up with the friction that I wanted, just a touch loose, but these pieces will be glued together once I get the final positioning together. So this is close enough to work for this project.
so off camera I did a little bit of light sanding uh, just a 220 grit just to break the edges uh, especially that transition on the duck's breast and to help emphasize the uh, tail region a little bit and also softening around the uh, wing areas on the sides and now I'm going to proceed on to turn the sphere for the duck's head and then after that we'll be working on the beak And I'm not certain I mentioned it earlier, so I should point out that everything I'm using here is off-cut scraps. These are pieces of cedar. For future evolutions, if I were to try and make more of these, I would probably work off something more dimensioned, and uh, so I can use more of a spindle format to cut the pieces out of. So, if you like me, you need practice turning spheres, here's the opportunity. Uh, it's going to be slightly larger than one inch in diameter, and of course that ends up being whatever you want it to be to uh, match up with the body size. I found this to be about right for me to work with. Uh, once I get it turned into a sphere, I'll be drilling it out for the mounting point. Ended up with a crack in the cedar at this point. Uh, I knew it was there since it was a scrap piece. I had seen it earlier on. This is the point where I felt that I needed to fill it in with some CA glue and then use some accelerator to set it so that I can continue working. So that went by a little bit quick and uh, four times speed. So that's a half inch drill bit that I'm using to uh, make the mounting point inside the sphere for the duck's head.
And this is just a little mandrel that I turned up to use with the collet chuck. It's going to allow me to mount the duck's head on it so I can continue smoothing out the outside and top portions of the head. And of course, since the fit was a little bit looser than I had hoped I was going to get, I filled in the inset on the sphere with a little bit of CA glue so that it could take up a little bit of that extra space to help with a better friction fit. And paid a little bit more attention onto my uh, scraping on the outside so that I wasn't applying lateral forces to it. And now I'll be turning the bugle that will become the duck's bill. I did try a couple different methods with this. Um, I tried one without cutting out the duck's bills into the bugle itself to leave it very simplified. And it, it just doesn't look right. I'll include a picture at the end of this and it's probably going to be the thumbnail as well that has the four trials I've gone through so far. Um, but if you want it to be simple, just you can leave it as a simple bugle. If you want something more complex, then uh, you'll see that I go through a process of filing out the inside and then a little bit of sanding to give a general shape of the duck's bills. And here I'll be drew, drilling through the entire bugle with a quarter inch drill bit. That's going to allow me to use a quarter inch dowel uh, to fit it to the sphere for the duck's head. Uh, it's also going to allow me to shape out the side that's going to fit against the sphere so that it uh, actually forms to it a little bit so you don't end up with a large gap on it, and you'll see that later on. And here I'm just shaping out the end of the bugle, uh, where the end of the bill is going to be. And uh, I'm going to leave a little bit of a lip around the edge. It's not going to come to a sharp edge, but it does help give the transition a little bit so it looks more like a duck's beak. So for shaping the beak into the bugle, I used a uh, triangle file pretty much straight across uh, following the grain. I uh, worked myself down about halfway into the, where I want the bugle to be and then used a uh, flat file to start the shaping and then some sandpaper to round everything out. I made the upper beak slightly smaller than the lower one so that it kind of matches the cartoon image of a duck's bill.
So you should be able to see the back of the bugle is flat from the parting and matching it up against the sphere of the duck's head, it kind of stands out. What I'll be doing next is that uh, mandrel I turned earlier, the other end it is rounded off about three quarters of an inch. And then I've got some sandpaper adhered to the back of it that I'll be sanding the back of that uh, bugle out of. Uh, that sandpaper, even though I let the glue sit overnight, did not stay on there. So I ended up turning another mandrel that's at a quarter inch diameter fitting the bugle over it. And you want to be careful with the friction fit on that one because you can actually split the bugle if you're not careful. And then I finished out my profiling uh, with my shaping carbide bit and made it closely match the sphere of the head. For the mounting hole in the uh, duck's head, I just used my drill press with a quarter inch drill bit. Uh, the little pass-through hole in the bed of my drill press was a perfect place to set the sphere while working on it. And I just positioned it in a spot that I felt was appropriate. Uh, in this case, I believe the bill aims slightly upwards when everything's put together. And now just a couple glamour shots of the uh, four ones that I have finished. I have just a little bit of spar urethane on them to help protect them from sunlight and heat uh, since I do plan on handing these off to Jeep owners uh, and expect they'll be on the dashboard hopefully for a while. Uh, hopefully somebody finds this interesting and useful. Uh, if you do end up making one of these, I'd appreciate it if you shared it. It would be fantastic to see others. Uh, using these as well, and I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you very much.